just going to close out here. Yeah. Okay. So welcome to Barbados webinar this morning. Uh, we have Mark and we have Shane uh, with us this morning from Barbados. So delighted to be representing Barbados tourism um, in the Irish market from both Southern and Northern Ireland for both the PR and uh, travel trade perspective. So um, we're really looking forward to working with you all over the next couple of months. So moving on, we'll start with the first slide here. And um, so this is a good news story, as you'll see that um, 2019 was the best performing year from the UK and the Irish market, with over 233,000 passengers that actually visited Barbados last year, which is an increase of 8,000 passengers, and it accounts for 34% of the total visitors arriving to the destination. So a really good news story um, for Barbados and a super result um, last year. And that's obviously thanks to you guys as well and your clients that actually have traveled down to Barbados for us. Some key facts for you, as you can see there, that the island is 166 square miles. The capital city is Bridgetown. The population is 280,000. Um, the official language is English, but their dialect is Bajan. Um, the time difference is minus five hours in the summer and minus four and a half in the winter. And the exchange rate is for every one pound, you'll get 2.55 Barbadian dollars. And moving on, uh, this slide was obviously before pre-COVID. So before pre-COVID, British Airways had a daily service out of Gatwick and they had 12 weekly flights out of Gatwick for the winter. Virgin had a daily flight out of Gatwick and three out of Manchester and a weekly flight out of Heathrow. Obviously that schedule is going to change and, but one thing is for sure that when the airlines do start to fly again, Barbados is surely ready to welcome all your clients uh, back to their beautiful island. Um, the flight duration is eight and a half hours and well, when you get down there, it's Grantley Adams International Airport. It's a very modern airport, it has won lots of awards for its Caribbean leading airport. Um, it's situated on the southeast of the island, eight miles from Bridgetown. And when you approach Barbados, you'll usually fly along the west coast of the island and you'll get a fab view of the Caribbean Sea coastline. So a tip um, is to get a seat on the left hand side of the aircraft and you'll be able to see this gorgeous view. Um, on arrival, you will pass through immigration and customs before exiting the arrival hall. And for your clients that are going down for just a two week holiday or whatnot, there is no visa requirement. So moving on to the island itself. Um, so it's kind of split into different coastlines. You've got the south, the west, the east, the north, and then you've got the inland coast as well. So firstly, the south coast. So the transfer time from the airport to the south coast is approximately 20 to 25 minutes. It's the most popular and lively resort on the island and it's great for young people and groups. It has stunning beaches um, along the south coast and as you'll see the southern coast of the island it's renowned for the activity hub. Here you'll find upscale eateries as well as casual dining options and local bars. Um, you'll be able to go off the beaten track to find all the watering holes which are popular with the locals. There's a breathtaking boardwalk which stretches along a significant portion of the coast and dotted with lots of beautiful restaurants, Blue Pineapple, Nanu, and loads of Beijing nightlife. You've got St. Lawrence's Gap, which is known as the Gap, and that has a 1.3 kilometer strip, strip full of bars and restaurants. So lots of activity going on um, down in St. Lawrence's Gap. Um, beautiful beaches, uh, water is very calm, great for swimming, kite and windsurfing. And the most popular feature, believe it or not, on the coast is Oystins. And it's a quiet, important fishing village during the day. And it transforms into a buzzing, heaving hive of entertainment at nighttime. And on a Friday evening, they have this like live um, street entertainment uh, called Fish Fry, where they cook the fish, they catch the fish, I should say, in the morning, and they cook it then at nighttime and they have like full on entertainment. So definitely a must uh, for your customers if they are heading down to the south coast to go and visit. Wide range of accommodation down here, including the Sands Hotel, which is about five minutes from St. Lawrence's Gap, and the Ocean Hotel Group um, have a number of hotels and many, many more down in the south coast. Moving on to the west coast, and the west coast is the luxurious side of Barbados, um, known as the Platinum Coast, and here visitors can enjoy fine dining eateries, swanky lounges and bars, 
white sandy beaches and upscale shopping um, at the Lime Grove Luxury Lifestyle Centre. Um, great for swimming, great for snorkeling and um, it's very popular to swim with the, the turtles down here in the west coast. Um, here you'll find lavish resorts and hotels such as the Irish owned Sandy Lane Hotel, its sister property is Sand Piper, you've also got Coral Reef Club, you've got Cobbler's Cove, you St Peter's Bay um, Hotel, um, all you'll find all of those on the west coast and you've also got luxury um, marina style properties unique to the beautiful area of Port St Charles and Port Fordland. so everything going on down in the west coast um, there. Moving on then we have the North Coast and the North Coast is of Barbados is completely contained by the parish of St. Lucie and is one of the most breathtaking parts of the island. It boasts coral cliffs, grasslands and beautiful hidden coves such as River Bay, Little Bay and Animal Flower Cave. And when you go down to the Animal Flower Cave you can stroll the cliff tops, explore the cave, take a swim in the cave pool and you can enjoy a delicious rum punch and lunch at the famous Clifftop restaurant. Um, so yeah, it's a super place there to go, very different from the other two parts of the coasts. And there's a no, there are a number of small properties and vacation homes on this coast, such as luxury boutique property, Little Good, Har Good Harbour um, as well. And then we have the East Coast and the East Coast is known for its vast beaches and rugged natural landscape. The beaches are not suitable for swimming, but they are great for water sports, such as windsurfing. Um, you have the sleepy village of Bathsheba, and it's a hub for surfers and is cited as one of the best surf breaks in the world, the iconic Soup Bowl. You can also do horseback riding at dawn down there, and then you can try unwinding at Naniki's in St. Joseph's with a morning yoga class and a nature bike. And then you can slip down to the hill and relax in a beautiful, um, and have your brunch at the Eco Lifestyle Lodge um, for a very chilled day out there in the East Coast. And the main resorts are Santosho and Eco Lifestyle, which I've just touched on there. Um, Barbados accommodation, we've touched on a couple of properties um, in all of the coasts there, but you know, in, in total, the wide and, it's wide and varied range of accommodation product from luxury hotels to three star bed and breakfast, strong villa presence um, on the island suitable for groups and families, and you've got Airbnb and other home accommodation operators that present on the island also. So there's something to suit everybody's budget down in Barbados. We have some new product coming on board when we're not 100% sure, but we are planning and hoping that this will all kick off in 2021. So what's coming on board will be the Hyatt, which will be in the city centre, the Wyndham Grand, which will be in the southeast coast. You'll have the Royalton Discovery Bay on the west coast, Hotel Indigo on the south coast and Ocean 2, um, which is moving to all inclusive with 42 new rooms. Um, hoping they have started the renovations on it at the moment and they're hoping to have that finished um, at some time early next year. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to Mark, who's going to give you a great account on all things Barbados. So over to you, Mark. Thanks, Leila. <clears throat> everybody. Good morning once again. So, uh, yeah, so Leila just kind of gave you a kind of an overview, so to speak, in terms of, you know, what's on in Barbados in terms of where to go, where to stay and all that type of stuff. But uh, I'm going to delve in a little bit more deeper and we're going to start with food. Now, um, you may or may not know, but Barbados is known as the culinary capital of the Caribbean and try to do that, you know, five times fast after a few run punches. But um, what Barbados is known for is a wide range of dining options. I mean, people do know about the fine dining. So you've got, as you can see here, the image, yeah, that's the Cliff Restaurant, world famous. You've also got Lone Star, you've got the Tides. But, you know, we've also got some really amazing street food. And um, one of the top two, you've got a place called Cuz, or Cuzis. So that's C-U-Z apostrophe S. And named after a guy, who, he just used to call everybody Cuz. So that's what they call the, the bar. And it's just a, a small shack, but it makes the most amazing fish cutters that you will ever taste. And essentially, what is a cutter? A cutter is just pretty much anything in a bun. So imagine like a nice bun and you put some fish in it and he would usually use, I would think, uh, sometimes swordfish or something like that. And it's just the fish in a bun, you have some lettuce and tomato and some sauces, maybe some pepper sauce, that's your fish cutter. If you get uh, some ham, you put some ham in a bun, that's a ham cutter. Put some cheese in a bun, it's a cheese cutter. Pretty simple and that's it but he makes the most amazing fish cutters and um, world-renowned 
well well respected on TripAdvisor and whatnot. And there's another place that recently opened, I probably want to say in the last four or five years, it's called Yellow Meat. Well, we say Yella. So for us, it'd be Y-E-L-L-U-H, Yella. But um, mm. Yellow represents, um, what how can I say? It represents a, a fruit uh, we call the breadfruit. So in terms of consistency, a breadfruit is somewhere between a potato and a sweet potato. In terms of taste and consistency, you can mash it, you can make chips out of it, you can make fries out of it, and whatnot. But it's it's very very it's very very unique to the island, and um, and they do these incredible breadfruit bowls. So you take the breadfruit; it's probably like just about the size, just smaller than a football, and so you can roast it, kind of scoop it out, and you can put things in it. You can put like meat, you can put fish, salt fish, all type of stuff in it, and you have these breadfruit bowls, and it's the most amazing thing. And it's literally like a roadside stop. It opens three days a week. And, you know, it's been really getting some really great reviews. And, you know, and that's what people like about Barbados. You know, the fact that on one hand, if you want to have that amazing fine dining experience, you can. If you want to have that street food experience, you can. And everything else in between in terms of casual dining and whatnot, it's all there in Barbados. All right, we can move to the next slide. One key thing about Barbados that you all must know is the fact that Barbados is the home of rum. It's the birthplace of rum. And, and I always say this in all my presentations, if you do any presentations with anyone from Cuba or Jamaica or the Bahamas, anywhere else in the world for that matter, and they say they're the home of rum, you can say that Mark from Barbados told me to tell you that you are lying because Barbados is the home of rum. And how do we know this? Well, in anything in this world, you need proof. Everything, you ought to have proof. So this is a deed that's dated February 20th, 1703. It's a deed of sale um, where one guy was selling um, a piece of land in St. Lucie to another guy. And within that deed, it has obviously what's listed on the property. And within that, you can see that there are facilities for making rum. And that's the proof that Mount Gay Rum uses to say that we are the oldest rum. And, you know, people always say, oh, but rum was being made before that and all that. May or may not be true, but until someone can provide the proof, Mount Gay is the oldest, hands down. So since 1703. But outside of Mount Gay, we do have other distilleries on the island. Uh, there's also a Four Square Distillery. There's also a West Indies Distillery. And there's a micro distillery called St. Nicholas Abbey. And we'll probably get into St. Nicholas Abbey a little bit more. But these four distilleries, you know, they make, they have their own special way of, of making rum and whatnot. So you can all, you can do all of their tours where you can obviously taste and experience that, you know, and have that rum experience. But what you're seeing here in the image, that's, a, that's the rum shop that I was telling you about. So a rum shop, very similar to a pub. It's where people go, congregate, um, enjoy good times, good food, good rum. And, uh, it's, it's like a, it's a meeting point. And, you know, when we talk back to colonial days and, you know, 1800s and early 1900s and whatnot, and even now, and still now, I mean, it's like a focal point in every village. And they're, they're saying, we, we used to say that there are about 1500 rum shops in Barbados. And I mean, we're only 166 square miles. We're not that big. So to have 1500 rum shops and a lot of them still doing fairly well, still doing very well patronized, Kind of says a lot of how we like to drink rum. I'm going to say among us our favorite rum. I'm working my way through a bottle of XO. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. XO is my favorite as well. But uh, a little fun fact I actually used to work at Mount Gay. And I remember a time I was working with the, the master blender, our, our last master blender. His name is Alan Smith. And, you know, just there in the office doing my thing, and I get a call from him saying, Hey, why don't you do a, a blind test? Blind tasting, like 11 o'clock in the day, blind tasting with rum. I'm there. I'll do that. So I went to his lab, and you know, he says, Okay, I've got these three samples here, or whatever. And you know, I just want to get your opinion on it. So one was EXO, I think one was Eclipse, and then one was, at that point in time, a new rum we were creating called 1703 which is a very fine, this is very refined rum. And, you know, I did the test, did the test and tasting, and he said, well, which one do you like the best? I said, well, I like B. 
B just happened to be XO. So what about C? He said, well, C was all right, but you know, I just like the XO. So C was the new 1703, which is an amazing rum, you know, a blend of rums between, I think it's no, between 10 and 30 years, whereas XO was a blend of rums between eight and 10 years. So, you know, typically people say, well, the older the rum, the better. But what I always say, what, what I learned from him is that the great thing about rum is, it's about your taste. It's like what you like. There's some people who swear by Eclipse, which is the, the, the least, the, the youngest rum within the portfolio. They swear by it. Some people love XO. So the great thing about rum is that, you know, you can experience it the way you want to experience it. You, you let yourself determine which ones you like. Don't let anyone force you into, oh, you must like this because it's older. It's all about you. It's all about your taste profile and what you enjoy. Um, we can move on to the next one. So we couldn't, you know, be celebrating rum and not have a festival to celebrate it. So we've got our Barbados Food and Rum Festival. So this year, it would have happened on the 29th of October to the 1st of November. We are still, I mean, up to yesterday, we're still saying, you know, what do we do? What do we do? You don't just want to cancel it all right. But, you know, the way things are looking in terms of travel, you know, it's, it's we're not too sure. But um, we will be making a decision probably within the next week or so, week or two. It's going to be a full-on, we'll try to do a full-on experience, or um, we might be doing just simply a experience, but we'll certainly let everybody know how that comes along. But the Buddha Rum Festival allows us to showcase all of the talents of our mixologists and our chefs on the island, because at the end of the day, when people come to Barbados, they want to experience Barbados. So we do sometimes have um, international chefs who come and, you know, they would have a, maybe a rest. Uh, restaurant night or what or me a patron the festival and we've done that with um, Tom Akins uh, for a couple of years now but at the end of the day as we say people want to see Barbados and they want to experience Barbados or food or drink right here you're seeing a guy by the name of Shane McLean an amazing mixologist making something probably quite amazing as well but um, there's a host of them and, you know, we're just really happy to be able to showcase them more because they've all won a number of awards um, across the Caribbean um, as, you know, just kind of showcasing the fact that, you know, they are top of their game. Um, we can move on to the next one. So moving from the Food and Rum Festival, we can talk about some of the other festivals that you can find on island. Um, throughout the course of the year, you've got Vuja Day. Well, Vuja Day and Reggae Festival, they would have typically happened in April, but for obvious reasons, those were canceled. Uh, the Barbados Celtic Festival, which was um, due to happen in May. Actually, it was really supposed to start this weekend. Yeah, it, was, it would have started on the 25th. But again, because of COVID-19, that's had to be pushed back. And, you know, we've also got like the Whole Town Festival, the Oysters Fish Festival. Um, you know, there are a number of reasons for people to come to Barbados and have a good time. A lot of them are usually focused around music, and you know, some around culture and whatnot. And if we move on to the next slide, we'll see the biggest festival in Barbados, which is our Crop Over Festival. So Crop Over is pretty straightforward in terms of why it's called Crop Over. In colonial times, up until, well, still up to now, um, Barbados was like the hub for sugarcane production, making sugar. And we used to export quite a bit to the UK. Uh, we still export to the UK, but um, in smaller amounts now. And essentially, uh, crop, Crop season starts in February and runs till about now, end of May, maybe early June. I mean, we have less fields now, but before it used to go, I think, until June. And at the end of the crop season, there'll be a big party because the crop is over and we're going to celebrate. So it's very, very literal. So it is the biggest festival. It's the sweetest summer festival. Commences in May, or would have commenced in May, and it goes until the first Monday in August. So this year, like many other things, it's been canceled. And um, so people are now just kind of preparing for crop over 2021. But the last day, which I say is on the first Monday in August, is called um, Kadumit Day. And then we have the massive street parade and we have the lovely ladies, as you can see here in their costumes. And um, we're, it's about, a, I think when it was last done, it was about a 10 mile trek through parts of St. Michael, Outer Bridgetown and whatnot. Um, you're jumping, as you would say, behind a music truck. You've got your drinks flowing. It's just really good camaraderie. It's all good fun. Um, 
and we're missing that this year. So it's depressing, <laughs> but to be safe, we have to watch our safety. So it's all for the greater good. Uh, we can move on to the next one. So an interesting thing that people don't think about with Barbados is the fact that, you know, there's quite a bit of heritage as well. I mean, yes, we're an amazing sunshine sea destination, but from a heritage standpoint, there's quite a bit there as well. Uh, we've got a rich melting point of history, as you can see, Amerindian, West Indian, um, West African, sorry, European cultures. Uh, we've got historic towns such as Spikestown, Bull Town. Um, what you're seeing here is an image in Spikestown. And a uh, fun fact um, that most people are aware of is that Barbados is one of the only, is the only colony to colonize another place. So if you go to South Carolina, Charleston, you will notice that there's a lot of similarities in terms of the way you look and feel the buildings and whatnot, very similar to what you would see in Barbados. And that's because there are some colonists who left Barbados and went over to South Carolina and they settled South Carolina. To the point now that when you go, even now when you go to South Carolina, there are a number, the, the way that people talk is very similar to the Beijing accent. And, you know, so there's a, there's a really cool linkage there. And last year, we actually um, worked with the, the, um, the National Trust in the UK, as well as, uh, the gentleman's name slips me, but someone from, the, from South Carolina who, one of the heritage leaders in South Carolina, and we just, we, we created a linkage where persons can see that, that historical link between Barbados and South Carolina. So for a very small island, you know, we, you know, we made it happen. We can move to the next slide. Sorry. Um, I'm going back. I'm going back, yeah. Why is it not coming up to romance for me? Oh. Next one. Here we go. Right. So, continuing on with heritage, <clears throat> you would have heard Lila mentioned earlier in terms of um, Bridgetown being our capital city. It's also a World UNESCO Heritage Site. And the thing is about a World UNESCO Heritage Site, it just doesn't happen just like that. Um, what, what needs to take place is that whatever happened there had to have some sort of global impact. And I'm gonna to try to run this through as briefly as I can because it was explained to me and it was fairly long-winded. But essentially, um, the garrison and our military barracks that's, that's located in, you know, Bridgetown is its environs, as we, as we would like to say. It played a role in terms of development of other barracks across um, the UK and the Americas, if I'm, you know, if memory serves me correctly. So the fact that Little Barbados and the way we constructed our barracks and whatnot and how we built out Bridgetown, you know, that knowledge was taken elsewhere and was used elsewhere essentially. That's putting it in as much of the layman term as I possibly can. Um, that's what allow Barbados to have that World UNESCO Heritage Site status. And it's a status that we're very proud of, and uh, we always have to let persons know, well, you know, you're getting a piece of history here, a piece of real history here in Barbados. I mean, we also have the third oldest parliament in the Commonwealth, um, obviously behind the UK and Bermuda. Um, we, also are, are, we also have a Nelson statue in Barbados, and it actually predates the one here in England by about 36 years. Uh, we also have the oldest Jewish synagogue in the Western Hemisphere. So a lot of, for, for persons, for, so if you're interested in history, if you have clients who are interested in history and heritage, I mean, Barbados, believe it or not, is a great place to go. Uh, we can move to the next group. Right, so romance is always huge. You know, after the sun, sand, and sea, people think of Barbados as the perfect honeymoon destination, great place to get married, and it is. It, it definitely is. But it's also a great place to have a stag party or a hen party. Mm -hmm. Try um, but a perfect destination for weddings, um, and it's pretty easy to get married in Barbados. You don't have to wait terribly long. I mean, you can get married within 24 hours of arriving. I know there's some places that you know you have to be there a week or maybe 72 hours. But the great thing is about about us is that a lot of our hotels do have either a wedding coordinator on staff, or they have really great linkages with some of the wedding coordinators on the island. So it's very easy to put things in place beforehand so that when you arrive, um, everything is ready for you. Um, in terms of locations, obviously you've got great beaches, scenic views, 
villas, boutique hotels, all that. So, you know, food for thought in terms of creating an amazing wedding day experience and, cre and creating a great honeymoon experience. And, you know, for the girls or the guys that want to get away before that experience, um, Barbados is also an option as well. We'll move on to the next one. So when tourism started in Barbados, and we're talking years, and I can actually even say centuries ago, um, it was really about coming to get better. So another fun fact from a historical standpoint is that Washington came to Barbados with his brother, and Barbados was the only place that George Washington ever traveled. Never, he didn't travel anywhere else, only Barbados. And he came to Barbados with his brother because he wasn't feeling well. He was, um, I think it was, I can't remember if it was tuberculosis or whatnot. But they came to Barbados to get better because of the trade winds and whatnot. And where they stayed was within Bridgetown and its environs. And we actually have a place, a uh, place called George Washington House, which we can do tours and whatnot. So, you know, so we're talking from centuries ago, people come to Barbados, you know, for wellness, essentially. Um, right now, a lot of our uh, hotels have, you know, spas and gyms and they do these, they have their yoga classes and whatnot. And, you know, they try to create that Zen peace of mind, so to speak. So the image you're seeing here are two ladies doing some paddle board yoga. Now, I've done yoga. I've done paddle boarding. <laughs> Trying to put both of those together, I do not know how people do it. Yeah. Yoga in itself is hard. <laughs> Just on and I mean, most of the paddleboard yoga happens on the West Coast, where it's kind of like on the Caribbean side. Even though when you look at a map of Barbados, we are pretty much in the Atlantic Ocean. The, the West Coast is closer to the Caribbean Sea, so it's a lot calmer. But, you know, depending on how the seas are, you can still get a few bumps and whatnot. And to be doing this version of, I don't know, Downward Dog, and on a paddleboard takes great skill. But it can be done with some practice. And any day if you fall in, you're falling into the beautiful Caribbean Sea. Not a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a problem stuff. Uh, we can move on to the next one. So we're going to talk about sports for a little bit here. Uh, and I mean, cricket. I mean, we were talking about football earlier. And even though football is widely watched, it's not as widely played as cricket. Cricket is still the most popular sport uh, in cricket, as we like to call it in Barbados. And, you know, you know, there are plenty of fields around. And obviously, when it comes to cricket, people need to talk about Kensington Oval, which is the mecca of cricket in the Caribbean. And, you know, we've got our great cricketing legends, Sir, Sir Garfield Sobers, now Sir Gordon Greenwich, Desmond Haynes, Joel Garner, Charlie Griffith. There are many, many of them. But there are also other wide range of sports. I mean, as you can see here, you've seen polo, golf, hockey, netball, volleyball, martial arts, water polo. There's a whole host of sports that persons can play in Barbados or spectate, depending on what you're looking to do. And what we're working on now, I mean, if you have clients who are maybe part of teams and whatnot, and because you, you've got really great training facilities, so persons who are looking for season training um, facilities are just a little different. Um, Barbados certainly offers that. Um, the image that you're seeing here is persons running through Bridgetown for our Run Barbados Marathon Series, which happens um, usually the first weekend in December. This year, it's still on at the moment. I had a conversation with the organizers about a week ago. So it's still on at the moment, um, but we're just kind of watching and seeing. Um, as you would know right now, to fly into Barbados, right now, you know, there's a two-week quarantine. But we're hoping that later in the year, once things start to settle down, hopefully, that that will obviously be relaxed and we'll be able to welcome persons back into the island, you know, just for that great break or just to participate in some of our sporting events. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So continuing with sports, um, rally is also pretty big. Uh, rally is actually, I think, the second biggest spectator sport. And the thing about Barbados is because, you know, we have some amazing countryside. A lot of the rally goes through the countryside. So people just literally park up with their picnics and they just find a spot and they see the cars whizzing by. And then it typically ends at Bushy Park, which is our racing circuit. So you would have regular racing, regular rally racing. You also have go karting there as well. Um, it's been used sometimes as an entertainment venue as well, because it's really nicely spread out and whatnot. But um, it's a really amazing day. Um, I've done the go karting. It's pretty cool. 
and um, you know, and it's safe. You know, it's um, it gives you that adrenaline rush, but in a very, very safe way. So we can move on to the next slide. All right. So obviously, we're surrounded by water. So sailing, you know, has its right there. Um, the thing is about Barbados because, as I said before, we are kind of in the Atlantic. To sail to Barbados, uh, you do need to have some skill, um, you know, because of the various trade winds and the currents and whatnot. But, um, you know, so getting to Barbados in itself, you know, proves your mettle. But we also have our annual sailing week, which happens in January. It's, it's essentially the first regatta of the sailing season in the Caribbean. Usually starts around the, I think around the 15th to the 18th of January. It usually, it's around the, um, the 21st of January, which is the birthday of our first Prime Minister, Errol Walton Barrow. So on the 21st, we would have the Round the Island race, but around that week, you'd have various coastal races, as we would say. But the Round the Island race, that's, that's the biggest one. That's the biggest race within our sailing week. And um, we managed to have it, have it this year because, because it was in January and things were not locked down. And right now it's still on for 2021. And um, so the, the, the actual Round the Island race, it's pretty interesting in the sense that we, we decided to kind of link sailing with rum and whatnot. And so the competition is if you can beat the, the, the absolute record within that particular boat category, you win the skipper's weight in rum. So when we revise this competition, I would like to say we're in 2020 right now. So we kind of revised the competition, I would say maybe 2010 or 2011, that we implemented that part where you, wear, you win the skipper's weight in rum. And like I said, I used to work with Mount Gay and we were sponsors. And for the first two or three years, no one won it. And we thought, hey, this is cool. It's a, it's a great little piece of PR. And, you know, you probably won't ever have to pay a toe because no one's going to do it. And then for about a few, a couple, then the next year, somebody won it. And I was like, wow, okay. And these guys were smart. They had the biggest guy on the boat as a skipper. And they're telling this guy, like, it's probably close to 300 pounds. And I was like, this is going to be a lot of rum. So I, I went to my boss and I said, well, does it include, like, the actual bottle itself? Because at that time, the bottle was pretty heavy. And they were like, nope, it has to be the absolute weight in rum. So I remember the display. It was a massive display. It probably had about 20 or 30 cases of rum. So every guy on that boat definitely had at least a case. And guess what, Yvonne? It was XO. Yeah, so they guys, those guys went down with that. So, and that happened about maybe two or three times afterwards. So it was a lot of rum. Um, but the last, the last ones that won, and they have definitely the absolute record. There were, um, it was a trimaran. It was called Miss Barbados. And this thing blazed around the island in about three hours. That's never going to be beaten. <laughs> Unless he comes back again, but this thing was incredibly fast. We had two trimarans come down, and they were like neck and neck coming down. So I think, and I think that was in twenty either twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. So since then, there hasn't been, as far as I know, um, there hasn't been any skippers waiting around. But that was an interesting story to tell. I love to tell that. Uh, we can move on to the next slide. It's very much linked with soft adventure. I mean, in some instances, a soft adventure activity is a sport. So as we, you know, we've talked about going beyond the beach and, you know, so there are other sites in terms of hiking and we'll get into that, doing stuff by land, by sea, in the skies, we have the micro lake tours and whatnot. So you can move on to the next slide. Right. So when we take to the ocean, whether it's surfing, windsurfing, snorkeling, scuba diving, um, we also have an open water swimming event, which happens in November. And, you know, to me, when I, when, I, when I look at open water here in the UK and, you know, where I see people have to swim in some sometimes murky waters and they have their wetsuit on and all that, no need to worry about that in the Caribbean Sea. You know, nice warm water, nice swimsuit, and you're good to go. That's a great thing about the Caribbean. But we also have a dive fest, which um, it, it, ha it, it has two roles. It kind of showcases the island as a diving, as a as a diving location, diving destination, 
but there's also the conservation side of it right? where we teach people about the reefs and whatnot and how how you can be a better person when it comes to taking care of our environment so it's kind of a twofold thing um this year it's due to, it's, it's due to happen in july but that is probably not not probably it's not going to happen um, we were looking at october to push it down to but Again, we're just kind of watching the data, so to speak. Our prime minister was um, has done a few interviews over the last week. Um, she did one on CNN, not CNN, on BBC yesterday. And um, she's essentially saying that, you know what, we, we can't give persons a day. You know, we don't want to give anyone any false hopes. We're just watching the data. So there'll be updates every week, every two weeks, just let persons know how Barbados is progressing. But, um, we're thinking positive and we're hoping that within the next month or so we'll be in a better position to say, hey, we're open for business or you know, we're closer to opening for business. But as it stands right now, and I forgot to mention this after I after you came on, Leila, um, as it stands right now, um, we are not allowing any commercial flights into Barbados up until the 30th of June. We do have some repatriation flights happening at the moment. Well, next week, I believe. We we'll have some repatriation flights happening, bringing people out of Barbados. But um, as it stands, in terms, and we do have some commercial coming in in terms of bringing in food supplies and whatnot. But as it stands, um, commercial flights, which well, international commercial leisure flights, um, they won't be happening until after June, as it stands. But again, we're being we're monitoring the data. And if the data shows that something different can happen, we will make the necessary adjustments. We can move on to the next slide. And yeah, so again, still with this salt adventure, you know, we've got horseback riding, you've got hikes in, um, we have in national trust areas. Um, what you're seeing here, the image is a place called Coco Hill, which is really, really nice for hiking. Um, mountain biking is, is growing as well. And we also have something called the Barbados Ninja Showdown, which is kind of like a Ninja Warrior type of experience. Um, usually takes place in May, would have already happened, but I think they're now looking at 2021 now, like most other events. Okay, we can move on to the next slide. Right, so Elite Club. So I want to talk to you guys about this, I and mean, you may or may not have heard of it, but essentially it's our e-learning and loyalty program. Uh, we can go to the next slide. And it's our, it's our own loyalty program, which offers rewards to agents and as well as gifts. And, you know, just to, and it gives you an opportunity to train on the destination as well. So it's fairly simple. All you have to go do is go to BarbadosEliteClub.com and you register. There's no cost to register or anything like that. You just need to put in your details and that's it. Now, there are two courses within the Elite Club at the moment. So I think the first course is just like an introduction to Barbados. And having done this training now, you'll be good to go. And then the second course talks about, I think it's the activities and attractions. We're actually in the process now of creating the third course, which is about gastronomy. So having done this training, you guys will knock out those courses. But after you complete the first course, we will typically send you a little gift box, a little goodie box with some Barbados branded items. Obviously because of COVID, we haven't been able to send those out, so we do have slight backlog but once you do that once you do the training you will get your box that's for sure um and what so that's the training side of it so then there's the the reward site so any booking that you do to barbados you know what you can do is just log back into the elite club and log your bookings so when you log your bookings um you will see oh, that site isn't here sorry when you log your bookings, you can put in the hotel, you can put in the, um, the airline, and what will happen is that we, as in Barbados, not St. Pete's Kimberley, but Barbados, will validate. We'll validate the flight, we'll validate the hotel, and then you get points. So for every booking, you get five points. So if you book a flight, it's points. If you book a hotel room, it's five points. Put them together, 10 points. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And you can just keep racking up these points, racking up these points, racking up these points. And when you're ready to redeem, what we will do is send you a card. It's called the One for All card, which can be used in a number of high, um, high street shops. You can use an m and Demonins. You can buy stuff on eBay, Amazon, um, everything. So it pretty much covers that gamut. So and you can use it as you choose. So we have some persons who just kind of keep it building, keep it building, keep it building. 
and then they decide, okay, I'm going to get a hundred dollar card or a hundred pound card or whatever. So what we what we realized, we started this in March of last year, officially, and what we you know people were some people were redeeming over the course of the year, but what we found is a lot of people redeem like around November, so I guess they want to get their Christmas shopping in. So it comes in very useful for that. So you have the training side, which allows you to learn more about the destination, and then you have the reward side. And what we also do too, sometimes we would run like little competitions and stuff like that and say, first, and say well, and what we plan to do once things um, return to some level of normalcy is that uh, we're gonna invite persons who are making bookings for a chance to win a trip to Barbados um, based on how many bookings they do within a certain period of time and whatnot. So that's going to be open to obviously persons in Northern Ireland as well. So we certainly hope that you guys would log in, um, get your profile on and, you know, start learning a little bit more about Barbados and, you know, once things get back to normal, start logging your bookings for chances to win trips to Barbados, being part of our educational fam trips and obviously, you know, getting those rewards and those points so you can redeem for the one for all card. Um, we can go to the next one. And yeah, so very quickly too, I want to talk to you about an initiative that we've just started. It's called the Barbies Cares. It's our NHS program. Now, um, it's been a really trying time for all of us, especially those persons who are working within the NHS. And, um, you know, because of the, I guess, the link that Barbies has to the UK and the fact that, you know, it is our number one destination and, you know, so we're feeling the pain, so to speak. And there are also a lot of Barbadians who work within the NHS as well. We thought it'd be great to reward some of them. So what the NHS, what our um, Barbados Cares program essentially is, is that we're asking persons to nominate their NHS hero. And, um, and that person will get in, will have a chance to win one of 20 holidays to Barbados. And, um, you know, there's no, I mean, we're all very much aware that these holidays will probably be taken, you know, when things become safe. So maybe looking at 2021, I mean, persons will be able to take the holiday when they can. It's not a case of everyone goes together. So it's, it's, it's a four-step process. We're asking persons to tell us their story. Um, whether they can share an image, share a video, and they can post it on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Or Facebook. And, you know, just kind of saying why you think this person deserves this holiday. And you've had some amazing stories thus far persons who were supposed to get married and they couldn't. Um, there was one couple, they both work in the NHS and they were both, I mean, obviously they were going to get married this year and, you know, that can happen. They work at different hospitals and, you know, they haven't seen each other for weeks, you know. So we've had some really, really amazing stories and people really going above and beyond to, you know, ensure the safety of the nation. So we ask persons to tell the story. And then when you do that story, you know, you can either share with a heart or, you know, we have our Barbados Cares logo, which also has a heart. So they share the story, they share an image of the person, they put in the heart, they use our hashtag, which is um, Barbados Cares. And, you know, they, they, they place that online. So whether Instagram, Twitter, or, or Facebook. And then the, the, the key part, though, is once you've done that, you can go onto our website, which is BarbadosCares.com, and submit your entry, which is just giving your details and providing us with a link to that particular post. So whether it's an Instagram post, Twitter, um, to, whether it's a tweet or a Facebook post, you put the link for that post within the submission form and all of your details so we can contact you and obviously the name of the person that you are nominating. And, and that's pretty much it. So we've had a number of entries thus far and like I said, some real heartwarming ones. And it's really great to see that persons are, you know, being so super selfless and saying, you know what? I think this person deserves a holiday. I mean, everybody wants to go to Barbados, but you know, I know I think this person really deserves this holiday. And so I encourage you all on the call that, you know, if you know anyone who's within the NHS and you think, you know what, this person is doing an amazing job, you know, I want to nominate them. You know, just go on to barbadoscares.com. All everything that you're seeing right here on the screen is there as well. Um, I'm sure Leila's gonna be sharing this um, presentation with you. So just encourage you to do that. We're looking to, um, officially the competition ends on the 31st of this month, I believe. So, um, so there's still time to nominate your NHS hero. And I believe, Leila, I think that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're just finished now, guys. So we just have a little video to finish off with. And I think, Mark, you're going to do your rum. Are you going to do your little demonstration? 
I am going to try to do a demonstration, especially okay. I have Yvonne, you know, on the, you know, I, I can't, you know, Mulgay is her favorite rum. So, you know, even if I wasn't going to do it because of Yvonne, I have to do it now. Brilliant. Well, why don't I play the video while you're getting yourself ready? Yeah. And if there are any questions, you guys can go on. Exactly. Ahead. We can have a look there. Okay. Brilliant. We may be a little island, but we've got a big heart. Things are a little quiet now, but we've got big hopes. It may take a while until we see you again, but we've got big plans. So as you dream of brighter days, just remember Barbados will be here. From Bridgetown to Boyston Bay, inside and out, through and through. We may be a little island, but we're bigger and stronger with you. So take care, stay safe, and stay joyful. The time will come when we say welcome, Barbados Nice. Super. Great. So, um, have we anybody in the chat box? Any questions, anybody? Just from Yvonne, any other questions, guys? No? Questions. That was great. No, all good. Brilliant. Oh. Super. Wow. So apparently we had a pretty good we had a pretty good presentation then. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm getting impressed. better, Mark. We're getting better. <laughs> all right, Lee. Yeah. All right. So let me see if I can if anyone can see my little setup here. Yep. Got a little bar. Can everyone see the bar? You can just yes. like raise your yes. hand. Or... I can see the bar and I'm getting thirsty, Mark. <laughs> you can always call on you, Shane. All right. So I'm sorry to hear that the weather in Northern Ireland isn't that great today. Hopefully it will pick up, but it's pretty nice down here in London. So it's really a good time for a nice summer cocktail. So we're going to create something today called the Mullins Cooler. So Mullins is actually a place in Barbados. It's um, just below Spitestown, so between Whole Town and Spitestown on the west coast. It's a really nice structure. It's not, it's, not, it's not a big stretch of beach, but it's really nice and really popular with locals and visitors alike. People like to go down there on the weekends and just kind of chill. It has a really nice beach bar there as well. So create something called the Mullins Coolers. So it's refreshing and whatnot. So what you need is some rum. You've got Eclipse. Sorry, Yvonne, we use Eclipse for this one in particular. Um, just select the rum. Uh, we're gonna have we have some um, mang not mango, some vanilla plus syrup. Now this is homemade, <laughs> but it's really easy to make vanilla syrup actually. All you just need is water, sugar. And you can either use vanilla extract or vanilla essence. So I didn't have any extracts, so I use vanilla essence. And essentially, it's equal parts water and sugar, and then you just add the vanilla extract or essence. In this case, I did half a cup of sugar, put it onto a medium boil once the sugar dissolves. Add, I added two teaspoons of essence. If I was using extract, I just need to use one teaspoon because the extract is actually a lot uh, more potent, so to speak. And we've got some lime juice and sparkling water. So this is a pretty easy cocktail that you can make. Um, it's a, what you call a built cocktail, so not much going on. So we've got our, here's our tumbler glass, and we can just simply add ice first. Um, it's kind of hot today, so I'm going to add a bunch of ice, to be honest. So we add our ice. 
and we build our cocktail. So we're going to use about 45 milliliters of rum. Now, for those who've been to Barbados, you know, we don't really do measures per se. We kind of pour until it looks good. So that's about 30. I'm actually going to try to follow the recipe here. So that gives us about 45 milliliters of rum. Do that. And then in terms of the vanilla syrup, we're just going to add, I think it's about 22 milliliters of that. So we use a smaller one. So that's, I believe that's 10. If I'm, yeah, that's 10. So we add another one of those. And then we add our lime juice. And the lime juice was, this is freshly squeezed lime juice. I, I advise that you use freshly squeezed. It's about 15 milliliters of that. Really gives us a fresh, a very fresh, zesty taste. And we stir. Stir that all together. And mix it together very nicely. And then to top, you just add some sparkling water. You can choose to garnish with probably an orange wedge. Um, that'll, that'll probably be a good addition. We mix that together a little bit. And folks, there you have your Mullet's cooler. And I'll taste it for you just to make sure it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I do say so myself. Mm. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> You're so welcome. This is what I do. <laughs> well done, Mark. Looks gorgeous. <laughs> Brilliant. It Thank is, you. It is. Super. Well, that's, we've come to the end of our presentation, everybody. So thank you all for coming on. We hope that that was beneficial and that you got something from it. We have an agent's toolkit. So after the call, I will send you all an email and I will send you on the agent's toolkit with all the information that we spoke about this morning and also a little bit about the NHS. So as Mark says, if you have anybody that's um, working in the NHS that you feel deserves that um, holiday to Barbados, um, get them to enter in because it definitely is a, a worthwhile uh, competition and they definitely deserve that. So thanks everybody again and um, we'll say, what, how do you say goodbye in uh, Beijing? Is there a phrase that you use, Mark? No, we're gone. No. <laughs> we're, <saying>, we're gone. <laughs> We're gone. Okay, I love it. Check you later. Yeah. <laughs> check you later. you later. I love it, Shane. Okay, so check you later, everybody. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye, Bye. now. Bye-bye. Thank you.